Shalom. This is Quay, and uh, in this session, we are going to begin looking at the message of the risen, resurrected, glorified Savior, Jesus Christ, to the church in Philadelphia. So our passage for this little series is Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. I will mainly be using a Tree of Life version as the main text. And so uh, I will read probably just uh, the first verse for now and then give a little bit of background on the city of Philadelphia. To the angel of Messiah's community in Philadelphia, write, Thus says the Holy One, the True One, who has the key of David, who opens and no one shuts, and who shuts and no one opens. Hallelujah. That is a good beginning, isn't it? Um, there's a, uh, this letter is a little bit different in several ways than some of the others. And uh, right here in this verse, usually when he uh, explains to the church that he's writing to, uh, the characteristic of him that he wants to emphasize, it comes from uh, uh, the description, part of the description that the Apostle John saw and recorded in chapter one. However, uh, in this case, it's, it's completely unique, although we know that it's true. He is the Holy One. Holy meaning completely set apart from every other aspect of creation. That's really what holy means uh, down in, in, in the basic meaning of it. It is, it is set apart from everything else. And God, being the only uncreated one, is the Holy One. And um, so he describes himself as, as the Holy One. I'm, I'm set apart from all other aspects of creation. The True One. Just Isn't that just a beautiful statement? Just so simple. The, the true one. And isn't that, doesn't just hearing that minister to our spirits in a day when there is so much deception that we hear, so many untrue things, and he's the true one. He's the one who has the key of David. Now, later in the book of Revelation, he does give a more reference to his a relationship with David, but uh, that was not mentioned in the first chapter of the book of Revelation. So, you know, this is a little bit different in that aspect. The city of Philadelphia is a little bit different. Uh, we probably, most of us are familiar with the fact that uh, the name Philadelphia in uh, the Greek is the city of brotherly love. Now, its original naming of that was really not speaking of the brotherly love that we who are born again in the Lord, who are of his spirit, that kind of agape love that we have one for another. It was on a humanistic term, but however, it does mean the city of brotherly love. And uh, it was in an area that was uh, highly, had uh, lots and lots of vineyards and high production of wine in this area. So the city was a center of worship for, uh, in his, um, I believe, Greek name, Dionysus the God of wine and fertility. I may have that mixed up. Uh, one of his names is Dionysus. One of them is Bacchus. You might have heard him called that. And uh, one of them is Roman and one of them is Greek. But it's the same 
it's the same entity. So he was a, a god of wine and fertility. Uh, it doesn't take much in our imaginations to uh, think about the kind of festivals which were uh, numerous, numerous pagan festivals were held in that city, uh, all mostly revolving around Dionysus Bacchus. And we can imagine what the nature and the character of those uh, festivals were. And so this was the, you know, the cultural condition of this city in the natural. Uh, it was also subject to uh, many nat natural disasters. And sometimes it was referred to as the city of earthquakes. In fact, it was actually destroyed by a major earthquake in AD 17. You know, while Jesus was probably a teenager in his early teens, uh, this city was had a destructive earthquake. But by the time of uh, the writing of this letter, uh, it had been, you know, restored and built back up. And here we have a thriving, a thriving church in this community. I believe that uh, the, the church in Philadelphia brought forth and was <coughs> a witness of true brotherly love that we have agape love in Messiah Yeshua. And so uh, we'll, we'll go on for just a little bit here. Uh, the Lord, after introducing himself as the Holy One, the True One, and the One who has the key of David. We will look into that uh, term and what that means probably in our next session. Uh, for this one, we'll just go on for uh, verse 8. He says to them, I know your deeds. Just a simple phrase. I know your deeds. Now, we've heard that before, haven't we? Uh, he says that to several of the other churches. And in, in depending on what he's uh, highlighting in their heart and how, how they are playing out their lives at that point in time, it may mean, I, I, I know your deeds and, and your deeds are honoring me. Or in one case... It was, I know your deeds, they're, they're dead. So he simply says, I know your deeds. And he goes on, he says, behold. So he wants them to really perceive spiritually what he's saying. Behold, behold, I have set before you an open door and no one is able to shut because you have little power. Some versions say a little. They, they add the, the, uh, that word there, which changes it just a little. But he says, you have little power, but you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And he goes on in the next verse to, uh, have them behold something and, and explain to them his understanding of the persecution they are enduring and what uh, is going to occur with their persecutors. In this particular message to this particular community of his, there is really no condemnation, or I probably shouldn't use that word, uh, there is no correction uh, to this church. Later on, we will find that there is something of an exhortation, which we found before, uh, for them to continue in the right path. But there is no correction to this church. And um, so that is a unique thing. I believe we're going to just close this session uh for now, and uh, in our next one, we will right away take up what the key of David uh, is, is uh, representing and standing for. So, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity 
to study your word together. We thank you that there is a blessing that comes to us when we read, when we, when we study, when we hear, and when we obey what the Lord is saying to us through this prophecy in the book of Revelation. So may we all receive that blessing now. In Jesus' name, God bless you.